Welcome to the YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about the benefits of physical media. Because while you see this collection behind me, there are a lot of benefits to what's behind me right now compared to their streaming counterparts. So why would I choose something like a Blu-ray over a streaming option? The convenience, obviously, you're going to lose convenience if you go towards physical media. Now some people will say, yep, it's more convenient to get up and put a disc in. Not really. I mean, if you have all the content at your fingertips, that's a more convenient way. But by taking that extra step and putting a little bit more effort in, you're probably getting a better version of the movie than if you had streamed it. I mean, streaming does have limitations. Bit rates are a real thing. A lot of telcos around the world and uh, internet providers will choose to sometimes limit speeds if the internet is down or having issues. So you can get an inferior version. And even at full strength internet, even if it's 100% ready to go, no issues, a lot of things like Netflix get limited in their bandwidth. Sometimes it's 25 megabits per second, whereas a 4K option might hit 100 megabits per second. So you're getting a much better bit rate if you watch on a 4K Blu-ray, for example, compared to its streaming counterpart. That's why when you saw something like Game of Thrones Season 8, a lot of the darker scenes in that season, especially episode three, were really grainy, really broken up in the streaming counterpart. But when they came to 4K, nothing was wrong with it. It was fine. We saw how it was meant to look. That's because of bit rates, and that's because of compression is occurring online to ship a video in 4K over the internet to you as a consumer. There has to be some leeway given, and they can't ship a true 4K version. It'll It'll look 4K, but it's not true 4K. It's not the highest bit rate, the best it can look, the best speeds, the best everything. There has to be give, give or take there. And when I talk about the internet, you can also watch this offline. Now, obviously you can download stuff to hard drives. You can download it to your phone. You can download stuff to view offline. But then you'll have that whole situation of periodically checking your verification and license to that content. Now, people have said in my previous videos that, hey, no, I downloaded it before iTunes ever started doing that and I have it on my hard drive and no one can ever tell it's there. Well, try putting it on your iPhone and see if iTunes cooperates. That's all I have to say about that. Like, there is verifications. There is periodic check-ins. I mean, Xbox are famous for doing that, where you try to put a game in your Xbox and they wanted to do it during the Xbox, uh, Xbox One X series, Xbox One generation where Don Matrick got up on stage and said, hey, you'll need to periodically check in to play your games, and you'll need periodically online, this and that. This, I can just put in a player, and obviously people say, but the players are going to go out of fashion. Well, yes, they're trying to get rid of them in consoles, but the current PS5 still has a disk drive, depending which one you buy. The Xbox Series X has a disk drive, depending which one you buy. You can still buy them with disk drives. You can also go out and buy a UB820, like a Panasonic UB820, like I did. Sony's still shipping 4K players. If all else fails, there's also, I'm seeing now disk drives for the computers coming in. There are lots of 4K options. And if you don't go 4K, there are thousands, millions of players out there that are secondhand or even just play Blu-ray. And most people are happy with just Blu-ray. And if, if you want to go even further back, you can get DVD players and have a full DVD collection and probably do the whole package with the player and all for less than a hundred. Like there is other options and you can't sit there and say, hey, it's more convenient and it's too expensive to do that. It's like, yeah, for one month of, let's say Disney Plus, one month of Disney Plus will cost what, 20? You can probably get a player at Big W or something for about 20, $30. And that's just the player, obviously. But then you have that recurring cost. So next month you have to go recurring costs again, $17, $18, $17, $18, $17, At the end of the year, you're probably paying about a hundred and something dollars for that service. Or that's if you're going with Disney or, you know, Amazon have a $79 deal and we'll get to ads later. But if you want to pay without ads, it's 114, you know? So you can essentially weigh up the yearly cost. And this is where it makes sense. You weigh up the yearly cost of what you'll be paying for all your streaming services. Write them down like, okay, I want, the boys comes out in this month, so let's write that down. Okay, I want to watch Stranger Things, so I'll have to get Netflix on that month. So weigh it up, give and take. You could be paying anywhere three or $400 a year for all your streaming services to access all your content. Now, obviously, that's exclusive to streaming. I get that. That is exclusive to streaming. 
But if you look at the cost of what you could have instead, you could have a DVD player. Let's just go DVD because it's the cheapest. It's the cheapest way to get in. It's the cheapest way to get into physical media collecting. You could have literally a bookcase full of DVDs pre-owned for less than 100. And I'm being serious. I bought a lot of my DVDs that I'm looking at off behind camera. A lot of those were $1 and $2 a piece. I filled bookcases for less than $100. You can do it. It's not hard to do. And yes, that's not counting the player. If you count the player, it's an extra 30. But you understand what I'm saying? Like, I could do that for less than 100. I could go to somewhere like the Salvos, fill 10, 10, 10. You know, I could fill the shelves, 10 per shelf, 10 there, 10 there. I could fill all those shelves for less than 100. And that is something we need to look at. The price, yes, you are getting a, look, DVD is not as high quality as the internet. I will say there are times where DVDs can look better than streaming. As I said, compression is, is an issue. But, you know, you own the movie in that thing. And that's a true ownership thing. I'll get back to true ownership later on. But also, have you ever had the situation when you're streaming something and you'll be getting into something? Yeah, okay, cool, I'm into this. And you're on the cheapest plan. Let's say you've just said, hey, I just want Netflix. I don't care. I want to go for that $6.99 plan or whatever they've put it up to now, $7.99, $8, whatever. And then you'll be in the middle of Vince McMahon's streaming thing. That was a really good series, although there's nothing that wrestling fans didn't know, except the last episode. So episode six of that show was, yeah, I mean, that's the episode everyone just wanted to watch. But it was a cool little thing to hear from how Vince sees the world and how delusional he is. <laughs> but, you know, um, yeah, it was good to hear that. But also, yeah, I think they kind of took it lightly. I think, okay, that's not about Vince McMahon, but... Have you ever been in the middle of something like that and you're on the cheapest thing and you'll just be getting into it, okay, cool, I'm in this series, and then an ad pops up and takes you completely out of it? That doesn't happen with this. Now, obviously, it does have trailers on it. It does have stuff like, don't pirate this movie. Fun little story about that. That ad where it says, you wouldn't download a movie, they actually got sued about stealing the theme for that. They used it without permission. So, cool little thing about, you wouldn't steal a car, you wouldn't steal a movie. They actually stole the theme to use it. But yeah, you have the trailers pre thing on some of these Blu-rays on DVDs. You have trailers, you have all that stuff. But then you essentially, when the movie's playing, they don't pop up start stuff in that. They're not trying to say, hey, you, you like 10 episodes of 24. Here, you might like something else with Kiefer Sutherland. You might like Young Guns or something. They might, they're trying to get your attention and pull you somewhere else so they can keep you on the service. That doesn't happen with this. If I say, okay, I want to watch Mission Impossible, there's not going to be a pop-up to say, hey, you've watched Mission Impossible 1, let's watch Mission Impossible 2 now. I could choose to do that, but I could say, no, I don't, I don't want to watch that. I want to go over here and watch Bourne now. There is more control. And you might think, oh, but I know, I know, I know that. I know, I'm, I'm aware of that. Yeah, but these services are built like casinos. They are built to keep you on that service as long as possible. And that's something that, if you look at the psychology of how streaming services operate, like you'll, you'll close something like a streaming service. I don't want to mention streaming services because I'm obviously on one, <laughs> but yeah, you know, you might close YouTube and then open it back up and it'll have a new thing in your lineup. It'll have a whole new bunch of videos because they feel like you didn't watch the last few bunch. So they recommend a new ones. Same goes for Netflix, same goes for Stan, same goes for Amazon. You close that service down and it may not resonate with you some of the stuff that's at the top. So they'll say, oh, well, here's some recommended movies. We'll put them at the top and maybe you'll like these based on what you watched. And yes, people are like, oh, I actually prefer that because I don't know what I want to watch. That's fine. Like that is your, that's your choice. That's how you choose to consume. But then their goal is to say, okay, you've just finished watching, I don't know, Charlie's Angels. Let's watch another Drew Barrymore movie. Here's another one. Or you don't want Drew Barrymore? No, don't worry, don't worry. You don't need to go to any other services. We got you covered right here. Let's watch a bit of, I don't know, what, what else do we have here? Let's watch a bit of Scarlett Johansson. Here's something else with Scarlett Johansson. It's, it's a bit similar though. You can watch this. Stay on our service. Nobody is controlling you when you have physical media. Yes, you might say, oh, but it's a high cost. You're not being controlled. You are being controlled. You're buying physical media. Ha ha ha. The big corporations own you. Yeah, but look. This can be a stopper 30 years down the track, and I own this. Like, you might say, oh, I don't own the copyright on the disc. That's true. I, don't, I, can't actually, I can't actually take the content off that disc and put it back online. That is illegal. Now, 
I can choose to keep that that version of John Wick on my shelf year after year after year after year after year. Come back to it in 10 years, it's still there as long as I've looked after the disc and I've maintained it. Now that is something that you can't do with streaming. I mean, we talked about the other day about Indiana Jones gone from Disney Plus. It's gone just like that. It's like it's off Disney Plus because Paramount's license expired with Disney and it's back on Paramount. Now people in Australia had said Stan has it and uh, I think Amazon has it. There's a couple of other options that have it in Australia at least. And yes, I will mention Stan. Stan is a really good service. They invest in Australian content. But, you know, when they when their license for that Indiana Jones movie expires, those Indiana Jones movies, Paramount might not renew them and then they're gone from that service. And this is what I'm saying. You have to jump around services to watch all your content. Whereas if I want to watch Indiana Jones, bang, it's up on the side here. I just go, grab it off the shelf, boom. I want to watch the first four. I want to watch number five. There it is alongside it. I don't have to run around different streaming services to try to figure out where they have them all. They're just conveniently placed on my shelf, ready to go. And also, you can loan it to a friend. That's another thing you can't do with online. And people might say, but hard drives, I can put it onto a hard drive and give it to my friend to watch. Yeah, but I'm talking about ownership. Like, yeah, you're going to have to fill hard drives full of movies. And yeah, that might be good for you. You might download it nonstop. That's fine. That's I understand people do that. But let's say I said, let's say I wanted to give, I don't know, what's the movie here? Let's say Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers. Let's grab that off there. Let's say I want to give Super Mario Brothers to a friend and say, hey, um, you might like this movie. You, you want to watch it? Here you go, take it and have a watch of it and then give it back to me what you think. Now, physical media collectors will also say, you have to be very trustworthy for us to lend out our collections because we've had lots of bad situations in the past where people give us back scratch discs and don't look after them. But you know, if someone trusts their friends and makes sure like if someone else is a collector, we lend them and we're pretty confident that we can trust that person. And if they scratch it, then we won't loan them anything ever again. <laughs> but you know, that's the whole dilemma. You can loan it to a friend. You can also sell it. Like if you get desperate and say, hey, um, I'm a bit short for money this this month. Okay, um, I know bad boys over here goes for a bit of money. Um, I might sell this. I'll take this in, sell it on eBay or sell it on Marketplace. I could probably get a good return on that because it's out of print. You can sell these things. Whereas if you buy digitally or even stream, that money's gone. Like, yeah, you might say, oh, it's cheaper at the end of the day, but is it? These are assets behind me. And they, I know a lot of the public don't see it as assets. They see it as, oh, it's a hoard. It's a movie collecting, it's blah, it's this and that. But it is a physical asset. You can sell it, you can loan it out. You can give it to a friend. You can give it to family to watch. It's, it's not based on online. It's not linked to an account. There's no verification method to say, hey, you watch this content and you're now giving it to a friend. We're not going to allow that to happen. You need to pay $5 more per account. There's none of that. It's just you own it. It's there. It's ready to go. And that's true ownership. That is how it should operate. You truly own that content. If I choose to get Mario Odyssey like I showed on the Nintendo Switch, if I grab that, boom, I own Mario Odyssey. Boom. I can grab it out of there. The cartridge is there. Or it's actually, it's in my cartridge is in my actual Switch OLED at the moment. I've been playing the heck out of that game. But, you know, I can put it in the Switch. I can, when I'm done with it, I can say, hey, um, do you want to play this? Like, my friend, do you want to play this? Because it's a good game. You might enjoy it like I did. And then they can play through it, give it back to me and tell me what they think. And we can have a discussion. Whereas if you did digital, you have to buy that copy again and again and again, no matter which friend, they have to buy it as well. This is how streaming operates. And... Renting or lease, it's not renting or leasing. You own this content. And I've wrote down dot points here. So you're, you're not renting it. You're not leasing it. It's no long-term licensing. What happens is you own that content on the disc. Oh, you don't own the copyright to the content, but you own the disc itself. And there is content on that disc that is the movie. And you don't have to verify it. You don't have to do anything out of your usual viewing habits. Put it in the player, watch it. And that is true preservation as well. Like you are truly preserving that movie at that point. As I've showed many times, I don't like the Terminator 2 transfer on 4K. I am not the biggest fan of that. I've said it in many different videos, but that's why I have, I have my right to say, hey, I don't like that version. I'll keep it there for preservation methods, but I'm gonna choose Terminator 2 on Blu-ray when I choose to. Now, obviously, I could choose to also go DVD and watch the DVD versions or Laserdisc or whatever, VHS. There are so many different options 
and preserve the movie as you like it. Like, I've got something off to the side here that I haven't showed you in the video. Give me two seconds. Like, when they replaced Star Wars, they got rid of a lot of the music in the Star Wars movies. When Lucas did um, those 1997 uh, movies, the 1997 special editions, he replaced a lot of movies. This has a lot of the original music in it, and I can get this out and say, hey, it's not actually, like, a lot of this music is, I'm sure, on streaming services. I'm sure it's available. But I can get it out of there and say, hey, CDs, boom, there they are, ready to go. I can hear the music as it was intended. No alterations, no having to worry about what's corporate identity, whose corporate identity matches with Star Wars, and did did Han Solo shoot first, or no, he killed Greedo in Bad Blood. I'll just put Star Wars over here for the time being. No, it's not going to sit there, but let's sit it like that. There we go. There's none of that. There is just simply, I can listen to the music, I can watch Star Wars, like there is different ways to do it. I can choose to experience it the way I want to experience it. And if you are on streaming services, you need to understand that you're the product. And I know a lot of people get annoyed with me when I tell them this because they're locked into the matrix and I understand, <laughs> I understand the whole dilemma. Let's get the matrix off the shelf because I'm going to, I'm going to make big references here. So a lot of people, when they think they think they're in this movie when they're on streaming services. They think, oh, I have to defend the system. And, you know, they even talk about this. They will hopelessly defend the system because they are so reliant on it. And you'll see people defending streaming like, oh, it's cheaper. It's this and that. It's so much cheaper. I can have all my movies and it's convenient price each thing. It's getting to cable prices and people used to complain about cable prices. It's getting to Foxtel prices and people used to complain about Foxtel prices. It's getting to those things where it's like, okay, you're getting on Amazon for the month, but guess what? It just got a lot more expensive because now you have to pay for an ad-free tier of it, which is an extra $3 a month. That you, If you bought Amazon back a few months ago, it was just automatically included, no ads. And now you get the pop-up ads because you are the product. The Matrix is a similar movie. It is something where people are the product. Yes, they are in a server playing with everyone's, watching all their favorite content in the server, but they are powering the service through advertising, through stuff the service learns about them, through stuff like that. They are learning about, the machine learning is finding out what human nature is and what things work, what things don't work, what what ads can they sell you, what, you know, the product is you at the end of the day. If a streaming service is free, like Tubi or whatever, Tubi, whatever it's called, there is a reason why it's free, because they're probably giving you ads and they're probably finding out Okay, how can we sell stuff to this person? How can we get them to go out and make a purchase that they didn't never otherwise need? Like, you know, there's a reason why I very rarely watch free-to-air TV anymore because there's so much ads on that thing. Now, given there are a lot of good ads that like Ronda and Katwit in Australia, like I think it was the Amy ads, they were other thing. Like they had nothing to do with the brand. It was just like, they just wanted to make a movie at the end of the day. And I was like, okay, this is something different. Like, okay, I'll watch these ads because they're, they're not trying to sell me anything. And that's why people went out and bought Amy at the end of the day, or Amy ad, or Amy insurance, because people were like, oh yeah, okay. They did a good job with that. I want to look up what they're about. And that is smart advertising. That is very smart advertising. Don't make it a sale. And like, I don't... I don't necessarily like, I'll try to watch sport on free to air. And this is a big complaint. I'll try to watch sport on free to air. Like the grand final was the other night, the NRL grand final, the Panthers four in a row. I'm, I have a soft spot for Panthers. I'll say I have a spot, soft spot for Panthers, but I'm a Manly fan. I'm a Manly Seagulls fan. <laughs> so I have a soft spot for Panthers though. But every five minutes during that, every time they had a break, it felt like there was a gambling ad and it felt like, okay, one single dollar and okay, and then tab, and then all these other betting ads. And it's just like, okay, we know what you're trying to sell us. And then a beer ad, and then something else. And then they are trying to sell you stuff. And free to air really annoys me when they do that. So there are times where I'll just choose to watch the game after the fact. Like, especially with wrestling, I will choose to watch wrestling after the fact or on a delay so I can skip past the ads and go past. And I can skip matches if it's just like, oh, so-and-so presents this match and I don't really care. I just want to watch the show. I just want to watch it as it was intended. Now, obviously, sponsorship on table when we were on the wrestling topic. Yes, I watched Bad Blood the other day. I'm wearing this shirt for a reason because, yeah, Kane debuted at Bad Blood back in 1997. But, obviously, when you talk about wrestling, 
there is now sponsorship on the mat. There is now sponsorship on the tables. So they have Wendy's advertisements. They had, we don't have Wendy's in Australia. So it only really, a lot of this only really refers to the American market when they put advertisement like that. But they had Prime in the middle of the ring and Prime is available everywhere. Logan Paul's drink. And yeah, we all say it's Logan Paul's drink, but it's really a brand above him that he gets a percentage of. Um, they're trying to sell you stuff there as well. They're trying to advertise to you subliminally. And that's what I mean. Like, you are the product at the end of the day. I know this has went into a bit of a rant, but I know my fans love hearing me rant, even though I do go down the rabbit hole a little bit. Follow the white rabbit. <laughs> yeah, so you don't understand what I'm saying. Like, you are the product. And we need to wake up to this mentality of defending the streaming services. If they really cared and they really cared about your wallet and your well-being, they wouldn't put the streaming services up year after year. And yes, I understand they're not profitable, but physical media was profitable and they moved away from it. They destroyed the old template. And yes, you might say convenience. It's more convenient. Well, look, is it more convenient? I mean, people talk about um, piracy and we'll go, we'll use that bad word, piracy. And they're like, okay, I d there's no good movies coming out. And then download every single movie that comes out. I'm like, no, if I want to see the movie, I'll go and buy it on physical media. I'll go to the cinemas and watch it. Even though the cinemas, cinemas are their own dilemma because I think they need to lock people's phones up. Like Dave Chappelle locks people's phones up when they go and see him. Chris Rock locks people's phones up. The Undertaker locks people's phones up when you go to the one Dead Man tour. Lock people's phones up when they go to the cinemas. Lock their Apple Watches up. Lock it all up and say, no, you want to use it? Get out of the cinema. Go outside. Because you're putting off other people in that cinema. And people talking there, people just don't know cinema etiquette anymore. And that's why cinemas are... It's, as John Campier says, it's death by offing themselves. It's, no one is hurting and killing cinemas. Cinemas are doing it themselves because people don't understand etiquette and people are using their phones in there and just going in there to use and, you know, it's like, why would you pay to see a movie if you're going to go in there and use the iPhone the whole time? Like, put it away. Anyway, that's a rant about movies. We won't go into that. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, we need to wake up to this defense of like, okay, people want to complain about, oh, there's no good movies coming out. Oh, Joker this and Metropolis that and all that. Like, I know they're pretty bad movies. I've heard about them. I haven't seen them, but I've heard the talk about them online. And people want to complain. Oh, but they are so bad. They're so bad. And then... Hollywood, Hollywood will continue making movies like that because that's the ones that get people into the cinemas. And yes, they're not doing as well as they should, but you complain about, okay, I don't want to see that movie, but I'm going to download it. And that's the problem. You complain about wanting to own movies and wanting to experience the content, and then you'll watch it on a streaming service instead of going to the cinema. And yeah, some of these releases don't come out at the cinemas. I'll give them that. I'll give you that. But... If you love Inside Out 2, there's a reason why it was the highest grossing thing of the year or one of the highest grossing movies of the year. It's because people went and seen it. It's because people had an incentive to take their kids to the cinema, go in, experience it. But the experience of cinemas is so expensive for a subpar experience to go. And yes, a lot of people will choose, hey, I'll just wait till it gets on streaming. And if it's not on streaming, I'll just download it, pirate it. And yes, piracy does hurt the industry because... Hollywood will look at that and say, hey, this movie didn't do any good. Let's not make Inside Out 2. Let's not make Inside Out 3 because if the, if it failed at the box office, hey, that didn't do too well. Like, I, we saw people loving it, but they weren't paying for it. So, uh, yeah, let's not make that again. People are going to watch Fast and Furious. Let's make another Fast and Furious movie. Great. Let's do that. You know, this is where you become the product. This is where marketing happens. This is like, don't get me wrong. Blu-rays are marketed to me. I'm the core demographic for markets. And I'm in that core demographic. I understand that I am being marketed to when Blu-ray comes out. But that's why I don't switch on to like say, oh, all the new releases. Here are the new releases. Here's a pile of new movies that come out. And there are YouTubers out there that do it. I get it. That works for you guys. That's fine. Like I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking the template. I do it myself sometimes. I get stuff off this collection. But we need to stop this whole thing of like, here's the new releases. It looks better than it ever did. Reference quality, 4K reference quality. I'm sure people are looking for reviews to understand if they want to buy it. But of course it's going to look better than it ever did. It was 4K, unless it's Terminator 2. But 
but you know what I mean? Like a lot of the times 4K is going to be better and it's going to be a higher quality. And yes, you have to look if DNR is being done or whatever you choose to be important. But there are certain things that I'm like, I am, yeah, I'm being marketed to, but I don't switch into all that chatter. I'm just like, okay, I heard that A Nightmare on Elm Street's coming out. I'm definitely going to pick that one up. And I'm sure there's about four other, five other different things coming out at the same time. And I'm just like, I don't care about all that. I'll hear about it when I hear about it. If it makes enough noise in the space and I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll just see if it's worth it. Then I'll start paying attention. But I know Elm Street's on my, on my pickup list. I know that's ready to come out. I know that's something I'm going to be looking at heavily importing. But there are also the dilemma of, I don't want to feel like I'm the product. And yes, you might say, but you got all this behind you, Jamie. You are the product. Yeah. But also, I'm preserva it's preservation. I know I can come back to this in 30 years. As long as I look after it, I can come back in here and say, okay, I am. I want to go back and watch The Exorcist. It's 4K right now. I can have 4K right there. There it is. Smart face. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, if I don't want to watch The Exorcist, let's say I had it on DVD. I can go and watch the DVD version. I can go and watch other versions of that. And there are DVD versions from the early 90s that are in full screen that you can't get on on the newer options. You can't get them on Blu-ray. You can't get them on streaming. Their full screen options are sometimes what's considered open matte, which means the frame is built for a 4x3 television screen. The old CRT, the box TVs that are gaming enthusiasts' dreams. But, you know, they are built for that. And... We need to wake up to we are the product when we're on streaming. And I know a lot of people get get pretty shitty with me when I say that. But you are defending a system that markets to you. You can't sit there and then say, oh, but this system done me right. They're mining your data. Everyone's mining your data. My iPhone's probably mining my data right now while I'm filming this video. There are a lot of things that are mining data. And they are all doing it to try to sell you advertising. They are all trying to do it to try to get you to stay on a service as long as possible. If you watch Halo on Amazon, like, I'm sure they can find a way to keep you on the service. Oh, you liked the Halo series, okay. What if you watched before that series? It's another video game series. They'll put a pop-up at the end of the show, like, hey, do you know this show's out? Watch this show, hey, stay on our service. You don't even have to turn off the service. Like, just leave it on in the background. Just leave it on and maybe you want to open it. This, I take it out of my player, I put it back on my shelf, and if I want to do it, it's my own choice. And I have to think about it as like, hey, I, I kind of feel like watching Halo. I haven't watched it yet. I shouldn't be referencing it. But, you know, I can say, hey, I want to watch Halo. Yeah, let's get it off the shelf. I want to watch that now. I'm ready to watch it. I And I don't look at reviews. I don't look at any of that stuff. I try not to watch trailers because I feel like the trailers don't get cut like they used to. The way to cut trailers is like Parasite used to. Where when the Parasite movie came out, you didn't even know what that movie was about at first. And... The trailers wouldn't give you anything to go off. And yeah, I know this is becoming a bit of rant, so I'm going to end it here. Let me know what you guys think. Like, what is the benefits for physical media for you? Like, I love that I am in full control of my collection. I am in full control of what I watch. I am in full control. I, as I said many times, no streaming service is aware of what I'm watching if I have, if I grab it off a shelf. Like, if I choose to watch Hollow Man, if I grab that off a shelf, uh, Kevin Bacon... If I choose to get that off the shelf right here, bang, there it is. No streaming service will know that I've watched this unless I've actually said, hey, I watched it all. That's why I don't use Letterboxd. Like, I used to use Letterboxd when I was really getting into starting my channel. And then I just dropped off. And there's a reason why I dropped off Letterboxd. Because then it's assuming, like, oh, you're giving a review. You must have watched it. Here's an ad that refers to that. And I was getting ads on Letterboxd. And I was like, okay, I'm not a fan of this anymore. Like... Yeah, when it was just something where I didn't feel like I was a product, then I was doing it. But if I feel like I'm a product, then I'm not going to do it. And yes, you might say, but YouTube is a product too. You are making YouTube videos. Yeah, but YouTube is a community and I can, there's a community around me. It is, the trade-off is that yes, I will get ads that are like physical media related. I will get certain things movie related, but I can choose to ignore it and I have a community around me and it's worth jumping onto YouTube to talk to my community that watch my videos that think my videos are great and will watch a rant that goes for probably 30 minutes. <laughs> I don't know how long this video is. I'm filming with the back cameras, so I don't actually know how long I've been ranting for. But yeah, do you get what I'm saying, guys? Like, am I just like ranting at this point? I mean, you guys probably watch the videos regardless. I love that you guys watch the videos. But, you know, I'm not going to do big production values and do like, oh, I'll have to script it out through and through. Like, I'll have dot points of the things I want to cover. Like, I have dot points. 
and I'll go like, okay, I want to talk about that, that, that. Okay, trailers, boom. I'll have certain topics where I'm like, okay, these are what I want to talk about. And then I'll go like, okay, these are the things. But see, there's no big script on there. There's no big script where I'm like, hey, I need to write out word for word. I let my thoughts carry me and I think you guys appreciate that. And, you know, you, I don't know what I'm going to talk about when I start a video. I will have a topic in mind like the benefits of physical media and then we'll go off on a rant. That's part of the fun of my channel and that's why I love that you guys stick around and listen to it. Like, it shows that, yeah, while I'm still trying to get people to watch my videos and get an audience around me and grow the channel, like, I'm not perfect. And I, obviously, I did the physical way a couple months ago and that was a big disaster because <laughs> I understood at the end of the day what failed with the physical way was people don't want to watch a brand people want to watch someone who relates to them someone who isn't trying to sell them something who isn't trying to say hey I should create a brand now they just want to go and say hey I just want to watch Jamie I just want to watch what he has to say that's the way I choose to think about it and I very rarely watch mainstream tv I very rarely watch anything outside my blu-ray collection because I don't feel like I'm being marketed to. I feel like this is a way where I can watch whatever and no one will even know if I've watched it unless I tell them. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. Um, I feel I'm covered about 17 different topics in this video and good luck trying to decipher it all. But, you know, anyways, guys, let me know what you think and I'll catch you in the next one. Have you taken anything away from this video? Um, yeah, let me know in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.